Erev Tov, good evening, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Let's turn in our Sidurim and our prayer books to page 22. As we sing a song of Shabbat, it is good to give thanks to Adonai. Tov lahodot l'Adonai. Page 22 in your prayer books. Mizmor shir le'yom ha-shabbat. Tov, tov, tov le'hodot, tov le'hodot l'Adonai. Tov, tov, tov le'hodot, tov le'hodot l'Adonai. L'zamer l'shim ka'elyon, l'shim ha'elyon. U'zamer, u'zamer, l'shim ha'elyon. Tov, tov, tov le'hodot, tov le'hodot l'adonai. Tov, tov, tov le'hodot, tov le'hodot l'adonai. L'hagid b'bocher hasdecha b'emunatcha b'lelot b'lelot. Tov, tov, tov le'hodot, tov le'hodot l'adonai. Tov, tov, tov le'hodot, tov le'hodot l'adonai. Let's turn back in our prayer books to pages two and three. As we rise for the lighting and blessing of our Sabbath lights, we'll be led in that blessing by Hannah Darginio, who joins us on the Bima. Pages two and three. Or shall let mom do it. That's fine too. Yeah, I'm bad with much. Fire bad. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter the sanctuary in need, all who bring the offering of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedeshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu L'hadlikner Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Ma'olam, Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotah, B'tzivanu Lehad Nikneh, Lehad Nikneh, Shel Let's remain standing as we turn to page 20, as we prepare to welcome Shabbat like a bride, like a queen, into our lives with the singing of Lachado D, verses 1, 2, 5, and 9, remembering to turn on the last verse to greet the Sabbath bride. Page 20. Adonai echad, Ushemo echad, 
the shame of the fair at the little la. Lecha dodi, lecha dodi in Krakala, tene shamane kabela. Lecha dodi in Krakala, tene shamane kabela. Lecrat shabat lechuven elcha. Ki him for haberacha, be rosh mi kedem nesucha, sof maase be machshavat hila. Lecha dodi, lecha dodi rinkrat kala, tene shabat nekabela, lecha dodi rinkrat kala. Pele Shabbat Nekabela. He tore a knee, he tore a knee. He va ore, kumi ori, uri, uri, shirda beri. Ke vod aranai alai ichnigla. Lecha doti, lecha doti. Kala, tene shabat nekabela, lechado di likrat kala, tene shabat nekabela. Boi v'shalom atere pala, gam v'simcha. Uvitsola tohemune am segula. Boi chala, boi chala. Lecha dodi, lecha dodi likrat kala. We have welcomed Shabbat, but now is also an opportunity for us to welcome each other. I, saw, I see a number of people here who are familiar faces and also some new faces too. So what I'm going to ask us to do as we have welcomed Shabbat with song, to turn to the people around us, especially people who we don't necessarily know or don't necessarily recognize. Even if we have to get up out of our seats and walk over to them, wish each other a Shabbat Shalom. Give each other a smile. It is a time of joy after all. Maybe even introduce yourselves. A reminder that we are supposed to rejoice on this day and be joyful with one another. On page 145, page 145, we join in Chatzy Kaddish. <laughs> Amen. Bechayechon v'yomechon u'v'chayech o'v'yit Yisrael Ba'agala ba'agala u'v'zman karif v'yimaru Amen. 
In each age we receive and transmit Torah, at each moment we are addressed by the world. In each age we are challenged by our ancient teaching, at each moment we stand face to face with truth. In each age we add our wisdom to that which has gone before, at each moment the knowing heart is filled with wonder. In each age the children of Torah become its builders, and seek to set the world firm on a foundation of truth. Baruch atah Adonai, Oheim Abo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael.
Page 150. <speaking in Hebrew> Hadabarim ha'ele, asher anochi mitzavecha, hayom alivavecha, vishinan tam livanecha, vidibar tabam, vishivtecha bevetecha, uvlechtecha vaderech, Uveshoch becha, uvekumecha, ukshar tam leot ayadecha, vehayula totafot bene necha, uchtav tam, al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha, leman tiskeru, vaasitem et komitzvotai, Vitem kedoshim lelohechem. Ani Adonai elohechem. Asher hotzeiti etchem me'eretz mitzrayim. Vihiyot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai elohechem. Adonai elohechem. Amen. We worship the, pa the, the power that unites the universe, a promise of harmony for all. Yet that oneness eludes our grasp as imperfection and evil abound. Before our eyes, there is a vision of perfection, order, and goodness. There is evil enough to break the heart, and there is good enough to exalt the soul. When will redemption come? When we grant everyone what we claim for ourselves. Long ago, we escaped the tyranny of Egypt. Our people saw the power of the Most High. We learned God's presence routine, time, and event. So, so we, we celebrate, celebrate this power that, that makes, makes for freedom. freedom. to rest, O God. Shelter us in the long, soft evening shadows of your truth. You are true protection and safety. In your presence we find love and acceptance. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch atah Adonai, haporei sukkat shalom aleinu, ba'al kol amo Yisrael, ba'al Yerushalayim. Shabbat 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 Yismechu Yismechu Vemalchutcha Yismechu Yismechu Vemalchutcha Shomrei Shabbat Shomrei Shabbat Bekorei Oneg Oneg Shabbat Shomrei, Shabbat, Shomrei, Shabbat, Vekore Oneg Oneg Shabbat. Amekar Sheshavi Shabbat Shabbat, Amekar Sheshavi Shabbat Shabbat, Amekar Sheshavi Shabbat Shabbat, Amekar Sheshavi Shabbat Shabbat, Amekar Sheshavi
Let's rise now together for the Amidah. Middle of page 160. Let's read together. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. 
and may we all live in such a way that this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai, Mikadesh HaShabbat. Page 163. Page 163, let's read responsively. For the good in us which calls us to a better life, we give thanks. For the, for the strength, strength to improve the world with our hearts and our hands, we offer praise. For the desire in us which leads us to work for peace, we are grateful. For life and nature, harmony and beauty, for the hope of tomorrow, all praise to the source of being. For all these things are sovereign. Let your name be forever praised and blessed. O God, our Redeemer and Helper, let all who live affirm you and praise your name in truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, your name is goodness, and you are worthy of thanksgiving. Baruch atah Adonai, hatov shimcha ulecha na'e lahodot. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, O eternal source of peace, and give us the will to proclaim its message to all the peoples of the earth. Bless our country as a safeguard of peace, its advocate among the nations. May contentment reign within our borders, health and happiness within our homes. Strengthen the bonds of friendship and fellowship among all the inhabitants of our world. Plant virtue in every soul. May the love of your name hallow every home and every heart. Praised are you, Adonai, who blesses your people with peace. Baruch atah Adonai, hamvarech et amo Yisrael v'shalom the back inside cover of your prayer book. We pray for wholeness, we pray for peace, and we pray for healing. And we take time in our service now to think of those who are in need of healing, a healing of body, a healing of spirit. If you are thinking of one or more than one who's in need of healing and wish to share their names out loud, I invite you to do so as my eyes scan around the room. Mr. 
for all those we mention out loud, for all those we mention in our hearts, together we pray for healing. Oh, 
We rise now together for Kiddush, and we welcome any of the kids in the congregation who want to join us up on the Bima and receive a Kiddush cup from Nancy Darginio, the chair of our publicity committee, who does all kinds of wonderful things. If you caught our MLK service in the news, whether it was on the radio or on television, it's because of her. The Hebrew of Kiddush will be on page five. Nancy will be leading us in the English, which unless you have a copy of the Union Prayer Book in your back pocket, you're just going to have to follow along in your head. Let us praise God with this symbol of joy and give thanks for the blessings of the past week, for life and strength, for home and love and friendship, for the discipline of our trials and temptation, for the happiness that has come to us out of our labors. You have ennobled us, O God, by the blessings of work and in love have sanctified us by Sabbath rest and worship as ordained in the Torah. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to be hallowed unto the eternal, your God. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kishanu b'mitzvotam, Berat zamanu, Yishabat gotcho, Yahabat ubratzon, Yihilanu, Zikaron lemase, stretch our hands out over our children, whether they're on the bima or somewhere nearby, and say over them, may God bless you, may God bless you. And, protect you. and protect you. May God's light, may God's light shine, in you shine in you and inspire you. And inspire. May, God's countenance may God's countenance ever be turned toward you, turn toward you. and bless you, and bless you. With, shalom, with shalom, with peace. With peace. Amen. Amen. You can surrender your cups back to Mrs. Darginio. Or put them on the floor. That's fine. It's all good. That's why it's white. Welcome, daughter. Lord knows I've spilled on it. We'll remain standing as we take our Torah from the Ark for our Seder Kriyat HaTorah, our service for the reading of Torah. Al Shloshah Devarim is on page 249 if you want to look in your prayer book. Al Ashlo shade barim, Ashlo shashlo shade barim, Haolam haolam omeh. Ashlo shade barim, Ashlo shade barim, Ashlo shashlo shade barim, Haolam haolam omeh. Ahadoha, Ahadoha, Ve'al gemilud hasadim. Ah Torah, Ve'ah Avodah, 
Ve'agemilud chasadim Afshadivarim God first. Put that on the table. You can take that when you're up on the beam. Ha'olam, ha'olam, ome. You can set aside your sidurim and take up your chumashim, the plout commentary on the Torah. If you don't have one in the pew in front of you, you can look around. They're all over the place. If you don't have a pew in front of you, look behind. It's back there, I promise, with the missing R in my sentence. We are reading from Parshat Mishpatim. You can find the reading on page 518 in your commentary. And you know what? I'm talking to you guys. But let me make sure I know where I am. Uh, there I am. Cool. Da, 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 da. Um, yep, right there. Um, mishpatim means what? Laws. Right. It either means laws or those who adjudicate the laws, right? Um, shoftim is the word we usually use for, for judges. But mishpatim means laws, rules. And it is a, this is right after the giving of the Ten Commandments, and we get this laundry list of laws. And we get so caught up in the minutiae and the details and goring oxes and, and people falling off of, par off of roofs and, and, you know, people, you know, do, doing all kinds of bizarre things in the fields and, and all kinds of criminal activity, and it's crazy, that we miss, we kind of glide over one of the most important mitzvot in the Torah. And I know it's important because it gets repeated again and again and again and again and again. And we know that anything that gets repeated over and over and over again in the Torah is important, right? That's like repetition is, is a big deal. It is also important. Um, it is also redundant. Um, but that's an important thing in the Torah. And it is something, I'm going to talk about this a little bit in my Devar Torah in a minute, but it is something we are so used to that it's almost pablum for us that we forget how radical an idea it is. And that's what we're going to be reading. Chapter 22, beginning with verse 20. You shall not oppress the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. We're going to talk more about that in my Davar. I would welcome forward anybody who would like to come up and follow along in the Torah scroll itself. If you've never done that before, that's really cool. And for the rest of us, as we are able, I'll invite you to rise and we'll join together in the bracha, all of us together in the bracha. A one and a two. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavorach Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim V'natan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah You may be seated unless you want to come on up and follow along. And again, chapter 22, beginning with verse 20. Veger lo ton e. Ve lo tilchatsenu. Ki gerim haitem be eretz mitzrayim. You will not oppress or wrong the resident alien, the stranger, for you know what it means to be a stranger, having been strangers in the land of Egypt. Kol almana viatom lo ta'anun. You will not oppress or wrong the widow or the orphan. Im ane ta'ane oto, ki im ta'ok itzak elai shamoa eshma ta'ak to. If you do wrong or oppress them, I will hear their cry. And I will heed their call to me. Vehara api, I will be angry. Vehargati etchem beharev, and I will slay you with the sword. Vihiyu nashechem almanot, 
and your wives will be widows. Uvenechem yetumim, and your children orphans. We rise for the bracha. And we'll remain standing for uh, Hagba and Galila, and as we address the Torah and put it back away in the ark. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vechaye Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah of life to them that hold fast to it and all its supporters are happy it is a tree of life to them that hold fast to it supporters are happy shalom 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 And thank you, Hannah, for helping undress and dress the Torah. Much help. Very, very important. Thank you for that. So I don't know if you heard the news. It's been on Facebook. It's been in some of the news in the Jewish community, but it hasn't gotten out yet. But Wilmington now has a kosher restaurant, an actually hectored kosher restaurant for the first time in years, if not decades. And it's not exactly what you'd expect. Last month, the VOD, the uh, kosher committee in Wilmington, certified Drop Squad Kitchen, which is on the riverfront, as our first kosher eatery. This is a big deal. We've had cupcake places and froyo places and ice cream places that have been kosher in Newcastle County, but not an actual place where you can go sit down and have a meal. And so this is the first time in a very long time that you could go someplace other than Lodge Lane or the JCC to have a meal that would be considered kosher, that is actually certified kosher. The question is then, well, what's this place, Drop Squad Kitchen? How many of you have been to it? How many of you know where it is? Ooh, a few of you. It is not a new place. This is a place that existed before and got a hexure as opposed to a new place that started with a hexure. They were started, uh, and they've been on the riverfront since 2012, so they've been around for a while. They are a vegan, African-American owned and operated soul food restaurant. The name was chosen by its owner, and I love her name, Abundance Child is her name, who took the name from a Spike Lee movie. It is a quirky place filled with books and board games, the kind of place I would have loved to hang out when I was in high school. The staff, who are mostly uh, Mrs. Child's family, are thoughtful and welcoming and kind, and the food is delicious. I'd been there before it had received its texture, and you want to know something? I am so thrilled. I'm so excited, and I have to tell you why. I love the fact that this place is kosher because it is exactly not what you would expect a kosher place to be, right? When we tend, I don't know about you, maybe not, but when I tend to hear the word kosher, when we think kosher, we tend to think about Jewish food, right? It's not a deli. It is not a bagel joint. 
There is nothing about this place that says Jewish. There is no kreplach, there's no latkes, there's definitely no gribnas in this place. For those of you who don't know what gribnas is, take some Lipitor first and then look it up. Um, but you know, but so what? So what? Why does that have to be our idea of kosher? Why does kosher have to necessarily mean the food is ethnically Ashkenazi Jewish? And why not an African-American business downtown on the riverfront as opposed to another eatery in Trolley Square or on 202 in North Wilmington? We had our derech meeting, the rabbis and cantors meeting this past Tuesday there, and it was so great to get out of our ruts, out of our routine, out of our comfort zone. And I can't wait to see more and more of the Jewish community doing the same. For Drop Squad Kitchen to become kosher and for the VOD to give them the hecksher, that is, of course, on one level, a business decision, right? On both of their parts. But it's more than that. It's an experiment in radical empathy. Will Jews who want to be kosher, eat kosher, be willing to go downtown and eat vegan tacos? By the way, the vegan tacos are really good. And will Drop Squad Kitchen want to welcome these folks who are not their usual clientele in? Why wouldn't the restaurant stick with its usual crowd and why wouldn't the VOD wait for someone to open up a more sort of classic Jewish eatery? Specifically, because it gets us to see each other as part of a shared community, a shared experience in this city. By eating kosher soul food, it challenges us to understand the value of kashrut as more than just a particular ethnic cuisine. And instead, as a collection of values that are meant to lift us up and better ourselves and the world around us. When we get beyond our own boundaries, when we stop being strangers to each other, when we become neighbors, it changes the whole relationship. And I can think of nothing more Jewish than that. A few minutes ago when we were reading from the Torah, right before we did, right before we read from Parshat Mishpatim, I reminded us that the idea of loving and caring for the stranger is so familiar to us. Those words are so familiar to us. It's easy to think of them as pablum. Right? It's cliche. It kind of washes over us and we don't even notice the words anymore. Yeah, 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 don't oppress the stranger. Isn't it nice to be good? Isn't it good to be nice? But it is one of the most radical ideas in the ancient world, and I would argue it is still a radical idea today. To say that we should take our shared experience as Jews of being the stranger, the resident alien in Egypt, to take our narrative of being oppressed and ostracized and transform that memory, that cultural memory, into empathy and into a moral mission is, I would argue, nothing short of revolutionary. And not just me. Rabbi Shai Held reminds us in his book, The Heart of Torah, scripture could have gone a different way. The Torah could have said something totally different about our experience in Egypt. The Torah could have said, since you were tyrannized and exploited and no one did anything to help you, you don't owe anything to anyone. And how dare anyone ask anything of you? It could have said that. And you and I both know people for whom that is their reaction. That is their experience. That is their way of responding to crisis. But that's not what the text says. That's not what I read. You shall not oppress the stranger, for you know the feelings of the stranger, having yourselves been strangers in the land of Egypt. Our memory, our cultural memory, is transformed from ethnic experience 
to intense ethical obligation. From an act of remembering for its own sake to one of moral responsibility. It's not rational. We're not told, be kind to strangers because you might get something out of it. Or be kind to the resident alien in case they take over and you find yourself on the wrong end of a sword. Or let's be kind to the resident alien, but only the good ones, the right ones who look like us and better get off the couch. We're not told that. The appeal instead is entirely emotional. The appeal in the Torah is, we've been there. We know what it's like. And because of that, because we know that, we have an obligation, an obligation to do what no one did for us, to help in the way that no one helped us. Whether that is the immigrant dreamer who dreams American dreams or the refugee fleeing persecution and death and the African migrant who comes to Israel and stays and raises families and children and converts to Judaism and then is told to go away and go to Rwanda. And by the way, that is happening right now. That's what makes this all so powerful. And the Torah tells us explicitly, that was the last line I read, to forget our shared experience, to forget our narrative, to think it no longer applies, to think that it no longer makes a moral demand of us, is to betray God, the Torah, and ourselves, and it has real consequences. That's what makes this restaurant, Drop Squad Kitchen, being kosher so amazing. It's a business act, but it's also a simple act of kindness. And that what makes our current debate about immigration here and in the state of Israel so infuriating. For sure, there is a comfort in hiding behind walls of our own making, the Torah compels us, compels us. As surely as it compels us to keep the Sabbath or the holidays to do differently and to do better. That is why we must act. Whether it's helping Jewish Family Services with their RISE program and helping resettle refugees here in Wilmington, we got another one coming in, an Afghan family, to help them and embrace them and support them. Whether it is working with our Religious Action Center to call for a Clean Dream Act, many of you know that our Senator Chris Coons, along with Senator John McCain, is trying to get that to happen. Whatever it looks like, whoever sponsors it, to help protect those people who belong here. That's why we must do what we must do to make sure those who are not from here, the resident alien, the stranger, know that they are welcome. One of my favorite stories goes like this, and you might know it from that great source of Midrash, the TV show, The West Wing. This guy's walking down the street when he falls in a hole. The walls are so steep he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, hey you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down into the hole and moves on. Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts up, father, I'm down in this hole, can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down into the hole, and moves on. Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, can, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps into the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. The friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before. And I know the way out. We've been down here before, we Jews. 
and we know the way out. And Torah compels us to be that friend. And Torah reminds us what to do. We jump into the pit. Hopefully we'll grab some vegan tacos on the way first. Shabbat Shalom. Our service continues with Elena Lishabach at the bottom of page 282. Page 282, let's rise. On page 290, it is a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, hope, dream, to be, to be, no to lose, a thing for fools this and a holy thing, a holy thing to love, for your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings a painful joy. It is a human thing, love, a holy thing to love what death can touch. If you are in the first 30 days of your mourning, I invite you to rise. And if you're in the first year of your mourning, I invite you to rise. If you observe a yard site on the Shabbat, the anniversary of a loved one's passing, I invite you to rise. And if it is your custom to rise to remember those whom only we can remember, I invite you to do so as we turn together to page 294 and join together in Mourner's Kaddish, page 294. Amen. <laughs> Yehe Shame Rabba Mavarach Le Olam Olalme Almaya Yit Barach Vishtabach Viet Paar Viet Romam Viet Nase Viet Hadar Viet Ale Viet Halal Shame de Kurisha Barihu Le Ela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata Tushbechata Venechamata Da Amiran Bialma Vimru Amen Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shamaya V'chayim alenu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mramav, huya ase shalom, alenu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru amen. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at the season in years past, and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. We remember Deborah Savin, Dorothy Litwin, Maria Aversa, Sam Berkowitz, Alvin Ira Blake, Rabbi Herbert Drews, Maurice Goldstein, Sadie Goodhart, Shirley Isabel Simon Grant, Bernard Stanley Carton, Lieb Kyle, Lois Elias Krinsky, Elise Robin Antonov Marsh, Marvin Nozneski, Hinda Hoffman Pincus, Matilda F. Raphael, Pearl Rosen, Thomas Seidel, Daniel Tabachnik, 
Florence Weinstein and Rose Weinstock. And I would ask if you have a name to add, feel free to do so as my eyes scan around the room. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing, as we say. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First and foremost, thank you to Brian Gluck for covering for the Cantor while he is with our teenagers down in Washington, D.C. for the Lita Ken retreat with our Religious Action Center. Uh, Cantor will be back uh, in a day or two, um, and he'll be on the Bema next week. For our Heritage Shabbat service and potluck dinner, you should have seen that flyer mixed in with all the thousand other flyers in your Sabbath lights. Um, a chance for us to celebrate who we were, remember who we were, uh, with a service that, go, that harkens back to our earliest days as a congregation, potluck dinner that anticipates that. Take a look at that flyer for what's going on there. A few other programs just to highlight very quickly. March brings us the two Ps of holidays, Purim and Pesach, where you can only eat peas if you're Sephardi. Um, but if you would like to join us for any and all of the ways we are celebrating Purim and Pesach, especially our second night Seder, our adult uh, Purim, uh, sp uh, not spiel, but uh, Megillah reading, um, all the cool stuff that we're going to be doing, I invite you to check that out. And also to point out the last Sunday in February, the 25th, um, we're starting a new program called Life Experiences where people in the congregation who have interesting stories to tell um, are going to be sharing their stories with us that we're going to record, make part of an oral history of our congregation. Our first speaker is Dr. Henry Bennery, talking about his experience fighting in, the, in Israel's War of Independence um, as a pilot. So I hope you will join us. I'm sure many of us know Dr. Bennery. Um, he's a neat guy, so I hope you will join us for that. That's going to be Sunday. There's another one of those flyers here. If the flyers are distracting, don't forget to take them home with you with your Sabbath lights, which has a lot more going on in there, um, all kinds of cool stuff that we're doing as a congregation. Um, and I hope you will join us for each and every aspect of that. With that, we'll conclude our service as we began joining together with Brian and with Dennis Stewart on page 321 as we join in Adon Olam. Let's rise. Adon Olam, Asher Malach, Beterem Ko Yitzir Nivra, Liet Nasa Bechet Sokol, Azai Melech Shemo Nikra, V'yacharei Kichot HaKol, V'vado Yimloch Nora, V'hu Haya, V'hu Hover, Behu yeh betifara, behu echad v'ein sheni, leham shilo lehach bira, beli reishit, beli tachvit, belo haoz v'ham misra. Let's join together in Hamotzi and then join each other for our next Shabbat. 
in there for um we went there for ice cream huh. um when they were still trying to figure out if they were a bit